Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths. In this Hardware Management Console 8 Crash Course Part 4, we'll be looking at creating a virtual machine, plumbing it all together and booting it off a virtual DVD. Well, if you want to create a new virtual machine or LPAR, then we have to select which machine it's on. So we've clicked the machine, Ruby in this case, my E850 Power 8. And we're going to go into Operations, no, Configuration, Create a Partition. This machine isn't enabled for IBM i, and we haven't got the license, um, so we've got AIX or Linux or the VO server. And if you hit um, IBM i, you need to hold new ball game there. I know nothing about that. So we're going to use virtual machine 100. You can select some of these options. Um, don't normally, although I'm tempted with the remote restartable um, is uh, quite useful. Uh, that does stop you having any physical adapters inside the logical partition. Drag this out a bit. The first profile name, we tend to use normal, but whatever you want to uh, call these in here. In the uh, power four or five days, um, we had only had profiles, and if you wanted to increase the size of an LPAR, then we'd have to stop it and start a different profile with more CPUs in the profile. Uh, these days we can do it dynamically, so people tend to have one profile. Maybe a, a backup copy of it, just in case. Most guys these days are using a shared processor so that unused CPU cycles can be used by somebody else. Um, some people were, were the, uh, still using the older fashion, may I say, dedicated CPUs. Uh, this seems to be an expensive way to operate your Power 8 box. There are reasons if you're going for absolute extreme performance, then dedicated can give you a little bit extra. So we'll go shared and we get slightly different panels coming up uh, now. If we go on shared and if we go dedicated, here are the what we call the entitlement numbers. Um, so we go down to a minimum. Let's say we, we don't want to do anything less than two CPUs. Uh, this is for a database. Um, if it goes down to two, we can't actually operate sensibly. So that's that's a minimum. The, the number we actually want is five. And if in extreme circumstances or in the future, we may want to extend that up to perhaps eight CPUs. These are two sanity checks. This is what it should get if it's available when we do the start of the um, LPAR. Now those uh, guaranteed five CPUs can be spread across more than that. Maybe we want to spread that across seven CPUs. Now down in here, this number has to be higher than two. But let's say I give it a four in here. And we maximum VPs that we want to go to is perhaps um, 10 in extreme cases. Okay, most people are going uh, an uncapped these days. If it's perhaps an important database, we get increase this number. Maximum is 255, so uh, 200. So it gets a bit more uh, than perhaps the developers and other people like that in low priority LPOS. Again, we'll do uh, the next in here. Uh, if you were going capped, the reason for that would be um, if you've got trying to control licenses, but the uh, processor pools are a better way of doing that. Right, memory, the, the defaults in here are a quarter of a gig. Well, you can't run much in quarter of a gig these days, can you? So let's uh, put the sensible number in here. The minimum would be for eight, and and the desired is what we probably want to get every time we start up, and maybe we want to go to 16 at some point. And we can take these numbers down to so the nice rounded numbers. Hey, let's put expansion factor on in here so we can switch that on later. Let's just go for a nice expansion factor to something like that. And we move to the I.O. That stretches off the bottom. Um, in here we have a list of all the adapters in here. We're going to use a pure virtual adapter list machine, so um, we can just do next. Virtual adapter slots. Well, if I can't have physical, I've got to have some virtual adapters in here. So let's create the first one, I don't again, for the basic Ethernet. Don't want to make it mandatory to have this particular one in case we want to change that. Um, and we're not doing the bridging, so that'll do okay for us. Uh, next up, we need some uh, some disk adapters to be attached in here. So we're going to go to, uh, we could use fiber channel. I'm going to use the uh, virtual SCSI adapters. And we're going to um, have a look at our VAO servers in here. We use VAO server 1 and 2. Um, all the slots are actually in use at the moment, so we can't just pick up an unused slot. I'm going to use slot 10 to match my LPAR name, but I just need a particular number that I'll have to set up later on. 
Okay, and then I need another virtual disk adapter to to use the same slot number because it's uh, easy to remember. That will do for me. Next, uh, we're not going to use the uh, SRIOV capable features in here. We're going to just go with the standard uh, normal in here. And this is giving us a reminder of the settings that we decided, and we'll finish off there. So here's our VM100 here, it's not activated, there's no disk attached to that, so I need to go and uh, first of all create the virtual adapters on the VIO servers to, to match up the two that I created on the virtual machine itself, and then I can attach some uh, disk space. So let's go to VIO server 1. And I want to do a dynamic virtual adapter. Here are the ones that are already created, so I need to create a new one, a virtual SCSI adapter to match the one that I just created. Um, I need to go to a particular virtual machine, and it was uh, 0, 1, 2 was the Ethernet 3. Was the first one the three, and uh, we need it to match the the ten that we specified in the client, and we can OK that. I'll do the same thing on the other VO server. And next I want to connect some disks up. So I prefer the shared storage pool way of doing things. So I can do that directly from the HMC without having to go to the, uh, the back end and uh, talk to sound switches or sound devices. So we'll do virtual storage management. Yep, query that first VO server. Shared storage pool, so I need to pull that in. And I want to create a virtual disk. Disk name is tied up to the VOS, the uh, virtual machine. This is the name of my shared storage pool. I've got uh, 1.7 terabytes free. Let's make it uh, 64 megabytes. That'll never work. Gigabytes. And assign it to VM100. Thin provisioning, this is going to set up both paths to my VO servers for me. Okay, here it is, all set up. Um, also, I want to boot off a virtual optical device. And uh, so this is sliding off the bottom of the screen a, a little bit. These are my virtual um, disks. And I have AX7.2 in here, so I'll select this one. It's already assigned to Ruby32, but I want to now assign that modified partition assignment. So it's also connected to VM100. So when I boot up, I can boot off the DVD and do the regular install. Yeah, I'll just close that uh, panel. So let's now start up. Uh, LPAR has some disks, has a network, and it's got a DVD to boot off. Uh, we'll go to a HMC and we'll run VT menu, run machine Ruby, which is 12, and VA100 is here, it's number 6. 
So I'll open the console, it will stop there um, until we boot it up. I'll do that now. Activate profile and just let it go. Here we go, I hit a 1 as soon as it said keyboard on the screen and 5 is boot options. Probably find the default will be boot off the DVD but it's worth uh, double checking. Uh, 1 for select install device 5, this is the famous 515 and it says yep the CD-ROM is the one it's going to boot off. I can hit 2 and uh, say normal boot and exit. Um, or in this case I can just Hit the X to exit, 1 to confirm that, and it should boot off the DVD. You can check on here what it's actually doing. Now, yeah, determining boot sequence. OK. And up it's coming. Little propeller. It's a good sign. It's pulling stuff off the disk, and here's AX72 coming up, and it will load into the installer and off we go. I'll assume there that you know how to install AIX and uh, put it on the network and we're up and running. And our movie's done, we've created a virtual machine. Rather the uh, old-fashioned hand-cranking uh, method. It took me about 12 minutes to do that. There's another minute or so with the AX installer to let that go. It takes about 10 minutes to do the installation. Um, of course, these days I use PowerVC, in which case I take about 12 seconds to actually kick it off, and PowerVC completes the whole thing, including any customization on my operating system that I normally want to do in about 2 minutes flat. If you've liked this movie, why not click the liked button below?